So let's discuss solving quadratic equations, and we'll be using factoring in the zero product property. Let me start by telling you what the zero product property is. The zero product property basically points out that if the product of two expressions equals zero, then at least one of the expressions must be zero. And we can use a little common sense to talk about this. If I have two numbers and I multiply them together and the answer is zero and ask you to fill in what the possibilities would be, you might say something like, oh, that could be zero times five. And that is true. That, that works. It might be 14 times zero. That works. It might be negative 42 times zero. That works. It might be zero times 1.7. That works. But notice uh, at any given time, one of these places or for that matter, both of the places need to be zero. And when that happens, we get an answer of zero. And we're going to use this to our advantage. Keep in mind that what I'm saying is that this product property works when the product is zero, right? When the result is zero or the answer is zero. That means one of these guys has to be zero. Okay. Now we've spent a lot of time factoring and we've been breaking things into products. So it seems like we might be able to use the zero product property. Let's take a look. So when you factor a quadratic trinomial, you usually end up with the product of two binomials, like I have here, right? This is 3x plus 6 times 2x minus 1. And what I'm saying is that the zero product property will help us solve this equation. Because we have two things multiplied together and the answer is zero, one of these guys must equal zero. And our strategy is going to be simply to write down the first one, set it equal to zero, and then use our usual inverse operations to solve the linear equation. I'm going to add six to both sides. I'll cross this out, and this is 3x equals six. And if I divide by three, I find out that x equals 2 is one of the solutions. It's the solution to the left-hand part of the equation of the product. Then what I'll do is I'll take the second one, set it equal to 0, and sure enough, when I solve this, these cross out, 2x equals 1. If I divide by 2, I get x equals 1 half. Don't worry about the fractions. It's okay x equals 1 half is another solution. So in this equation, if we plug in a 2, we get 0. And if we plug in a 1 half, we get 0. So our solution set is 1 half and 2. This particular equation has two solutions. I know you're used to equations that just have one solution. Those are called linear equations. But with these new equations, we're most likely going to get two solutions. Not always, but most of the time. Okay, so let's use this on a full-fledged polynomial and see if we can end up with our solutions. So here we have a typical quadratic equation. We have a quadratic trinomial that happens to be set equal to zero, and we're supposed to solve for x. We want to find the values of x that make the equation true. What I'm suggesting is that if you factor this the way you've learned and then apply the zero product property, you can find those solutions. So remember, when we factor, we're basically going to take a look at this number, negative 60, and we're going to try and uh, figure out which pair of factors of negative 60 add up to negative 28. So we're going to have x plus something and x minus something. The reason I know it's a plus and a minus is that the C value is negative. And let's see, a little bit of thinking here. I'm thinking it's negative 30 plus 2. Yes, that's negative 28. Smiley face that. So I'm going to put X plus 2 and X minus 30, and I should be good to go. 
Remember, this is an equation that equals zero. But now, once we factor it, we have a product, and one of these guys has to be zero if the result is zero. So either x plus 2 equals zero, which means I'm going to minus 2 from both sides, and I get x equals negative 2, and or x minus 30 equals 0. Right? Our, our idea is that one of these factors, either x plus 2 or x minus 30, has to be 0. If you multiply them together and the answer is 0, one of them has to be 0, or both of them. And so we're going to solve this thing. We're going to add 30 to both sides. And we end up with this 0 equaling 30. This solution equaling 30. And so my solution set looks like it's negative 2 and 30. And I want to show you that this is, in fact, uh, the solution set. Let's start with putting negative 2 into the equation. If I put negative 2 in here for x squared, for x, and square it, I get 4. If I put negative 2 in here for x, I'm going to get positive 56. 4 plus 56 is 60, and you subtract 60, you get 0. So yeah, negative 2 works. If we do the same thing with 30, the numbers are going to be bigger, but we're going to end up with 0 again. So that's great news. So this is indeed the solution set. Notice we include it in curly braces, in set notation, and negative 2 and 30. Put the values in uh, ascending order, lowest to highest, just to, just to keep us organized. Okay, let's try a couple more. So here's another quadratic equation. Uh, it's quadratic because it's degree 2, right? The uh, power on the highest power of x, the exponent of the highest power of x is 2. Uh, we need to factor this thing. And this time we're going to need to use a GCF to factor this. So I noticed that 3x squared and 18x have a GCF of 3x. And I'll factor that out. That leaves me with x minus 6 as the other factor. Now don't throw that 3x away. That's one of our factors. We have two things that are multiplied together. We have 3x and we have x minus 6. One or both of those has to be 0. So I'm going to set 3x equal to 0 and solve. You divide by 3 and you get x equals 0. And I'm going to set this guy equal to 0, x minus 6. And you add 6 to both sides and you get x equals 6. So my solution set is 0 and 6. Keep in mind, this was the GCF. Sometimes you can only factor with GCF. So always look for GCF. Use the flowchart that we've been working with. Here's a quadratic equation that actually uh, is one of our special products, which we've been factoring. This is a difference of perfect squares. And the way we factor this is with our conjugates. So it looks like this is going to be, what, 4x plus 9 and 4x minus 9. Remember, the product is 0. So we've got to set both of these equal to 0 because either or... Uh, factor is equal to 0. Oh my goodness, this is a two-stepper, so I'm going to do minus 9. That's a negative 9. 4x equals negative 9. And I'm going to divide by 4. Don't panic. It's just negative 9 fourths. We'll leave it as a fraction. You don't need to make it a decimal. And this is the conjugate 4x minus 9 equals 0. When we solve this I'm going to warn you ahead of time, spoiler alert, that this is going to be a positive 9 fourths. All the math is the same except the sign on the 9. So this is 4x equals 9, divided by 4, and yeah, we do get 9 fourths. So our solution set for this difference of perfect squares, set equal to 0, is actually negative 9 fourths and positive 9 fourths. Don't forget about difference of perfect squares. Those are really easy to factor as long as you remember uh, 
our strategy, as long as you recognize that it's a, perfect, a difference of perfect squares. Okay, two more examples just to remind you how this factoring works, and I think we're going to practice some of these. Here we have the quadratic trinomial set equal to 0, x squared plus 14x minus 49. It's a quadratic equation. We need to factor it, but I want you to notice this is another special product. This is a perfect square trinomial. And so we know that this is going to factor as x plus 7 squared. Right? It's x plus 7 times x plus 7. Uh, you can check the middle term, x times 7 is 7x, and you double it, you get 14, so we've factored it correctly. The good thing about perfect square trinomials is both of the binomials are the same, so you only have to set one of them equal to 0. Because they're the same, you don't want to do the same work. So it looks like this is just going to be negative 7. x equals negative 7. In this case, for a perfect square trinomial, there's only one solution, negative 7, that will make this equation true. Negative 7 is the only number that I can plug in for x squared, or for x, right, in the x squared term and in the 14x term, where the answer will be 0. So that's something just to note that when you do factor a perfect square trinomial, you're only going to get one solution. <sighs> Last quadratic equation. This particular quadratic equation starts with a 2x squared. So we're going to use our method that we've been working with. We call it the Berry method to factor this thing. We know it's going to be 2x plus something and 2x plus something. Now I'm not going to set this equal to 0 because remember this is our interim step. Once we get it factored I'll set it equal to 0 again. Uh, we need to do 2 times 9, which is 18, and we got to check factors of 18 to add up to 9. Let me see. Uh, ooh, 6 and 3. Yep, 6 plus 3 equals 9. That's good. So I'll put a 6 here and a 3 here. And then we've got the GCF here of 2. So this thing factors as x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. Now I'll set it back equal to 0 because I'm done with those interim steps. Let's make sure this works. 2x squared my, uh, plus 3x plus 6x is 9x and then plus 9. Perfect. All right, let's apply the zero product property. Either x plus 3 equals 0. We're going to subtract 3 both sides and this is x equals negative 3. Or 2x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 from both sides. What is this? 2x equals negative 3, divide by 2, and we're going to get a fraction again. Don't panic. This is x equals negative 3 over 2, or negative 3 halves. So we have our two solutions. We're going to write them in descending order, so negative 3 is lower, and then negative 3 over 2, which is negative 1.5, is a little bit higher. And those are our two solutions. These are the only two values that when you plug them in for x in the original equation will make it equal 0. Okay, so I've given you several examples of how to use factoring and the zero product property to solve quadratic e equations. So now it's time to practice. Keep these examples in your notes and peek at them if you need to while you're practicing. Uh, good luck and we'll see you soon.